Hey, welcome back to our internet tutorial series, Introduction to Emergy Solve. We're working through di the different workflows that you can do with Emergy Solve. We did previous videos looking at using a model plus an event object to get just a single si uh, simulated profile from your model. Um, we did a second video looking at a model plus an event object and plus a population. That was the iData set where you could do batch batches of simulations or sensitivity analyses. In this video, I'd like to show you the the most common workflow that we use for larger simulation projects, and that's taking a model and using it with a data set. Now, a data set is kind of like the event object that we were using before, except it's a generalized R data frame, and we can have multiple individuals with their different dosing information, as well as covariates in a single data structure. And that's just the way to get the most flexible and the most customized um, population into your simulation. So let's start by loading a population simulation model out of the uh, our, our, our uh, model library that comes with MRG Solve. This one's called Poppy X. And let's look at that model really quick. We'll type the C mod just to look at the model code that came from that model object. So this is just a, a simple, just example population PK model. Um, there's just a single compartment here. Um, the thing that I wanted to highlight here is that we've got a clearance, a central volume, and a KA. And the volume and the clearance are functions of weight, so there's a covariate in this model. And we've also got some random effects through this omega block. We've got ADAs on clearance, volume, and KA. And then our simulated output uh, the concentration, we can just either pick IPRED or DV, they're going to come out to be the same in, in this model. And so since we're using a population model, we've got some random effects here. I'm going to make an input data set using a, a helper constructor function. And it's going to be called expand. And so we're going to simulate in uh, about 20 individuals at each of three different doses. And we're going to run that. Expand DV is like expand grid. It's going to make all combinations of these things. So we've got 20 IDs. We're going to have those at each in three of the three different doses here. Um, this is what the, the data, that data set looks like. This is just a regular R data frame and you can see the expand EV um, by definition makes um, has one individual per row, so the, each individual can just have a single uh, sequence of events, and that's what comes out of expand EV. Although the data sets aren't limited to that, there's other helper functions. We'll talk about it in a different video where you can combine complicated events or a series of events for each individual, and these data sets can be uh, arbitrarily complex, and as many individuals. Uh, as you'd like, and that then they can have just the any kind of customized um, event sequence for each individual as well. But this is just one of the simple examples that I'm going to show, just to show the data set. So I'm going to take this model object, and I want to simulate from this data set. And so there's a function called data underscore set. I'm going to pass that in. Emergy sim, and I'm going to end this out to be 72. I'm gonna get an I'm gonna get 10 observations per hour here, uh, and I think I'm gonna request DV here just to simplify the output a little bit. So let's go back and run this again. Load our model, create our data set. There's our output, and let's just put this to plot. Okay, so those there are those 60 individuals. They got simulated out. You can see that there's um, there's uh, different doses, in effect, there's a, a factor of 10 difference between the highest dose and the lowest dose. So let's try and pull that into the simulation here as well. Um, so I can say um, carry out is dose. And then I'm going to, what I'm going to have to do on this is capture that dosing amount in the data set. So now look at the data set now we've got this dose column and that we can carry that out into the output and I can plot the DV versus time by dose 
and I think we're going to want to say scales equals same here just so we can see the difference there okay so now we've got uh, this 100 milligram dose the 300 milligram dose and we've got the 1000 milligram dose in separate panels there still is variability in here um, as we saw in the model there's two different levels of variability here um, or sorry there's uh, there's the variability due to the dose here that we're going to see here and then we've got this random variability um, and we can just take out that random variability we can just zero out the random effects in the simulation and now we get just a single uh, plot uh, profile for each different dose level um, in addition to dosing information on the data set you can also put covariate information or anything that's in your parameter list so this model had a covariate model that was being driven by weight and so since we have weight in the parameter list we can modify our data set we can say weight equals uniform from 40 to 140 just something simple here and let's just bump this up the number of people just to get the simulation now we look at our data set now we've got um, we've got a hundred patients at each of three different doses so we should have a 300 individuals they've all got a, a weight that's going to get simulated into here this is going to take a little bit longer to plot because it's got more data to plot and so now we see that now we've got some variability back in here and that's being driven by weight um, and you can see that the lowest lower the low middle and the high doses we've got some variability in the profile that's being driven by this covariate weight here and then we can just toggle this uh, the random effects in this model on and off and now we, uh, in this next run we've got variability here due to dose weight and then the random variability um, from the uh, the random effects in the model so you you kind of see that this the the data set that we've been playing around with here if we look at the if we look at the event IDs in here there's only um, one type of record in here so there's 300 dosing records in here in this data set um, and when we do that we can control the simulation end time here through that simulation grid that we get out of the model object so we could run this out to 120 hours instead and we can determine that simulation end time uh, through that the time grid in the in the model object I'd like to show you just some example data sets and we'll kind of show some other things that we can do here so there's a help topic that comes from MRG self called example data sets and MRG self shifts with some example uh, data sets that you can work with so we'll load this example Theophylline data set And now we can see uh, and we can see in this data set we've got both observation records which are EVID 0 as well as dosing records which are EVID 1 and Ambergy Self can simulate out of that data set as well so my data set is going to be EXD theof So now we got this, uh, these observations that are coming from this Theophylline data set. They're being driven by the data. Let's say type equals BN here, just so you can see where all this is, uh, where the specific points that are getting encoded by the data set are coming from. If I drop the observation records, if I only retain the, uh, the dosing records, I can simulate from this. And now that's the signal to MRG solve. Uh, that says if there's no observation records in the data set then MRG solve is going to add the observation records for you um, and so the MRG solve this data set construct can accommodate just data sets that only contain dosing records which is what we do most of the time I'm not really interested in doing all that data assembly 
to get the observations where I want them, but it will handle a clinical data set where the data where the observation records are encoded in the data set, and then you'll get those observations um, exactly where you want those observations to be. One more example data set that I'll show you. This is EXTRAN1. So this has only um, uh, this has only um, dosing records in this data set, um, but it's got a bunch of um, it's got some bolus doses here where what rate is zero. It's got a handful of infusions that it starts, and just look at that data. So you can see this is a mix of five different individuals, and some individuals have these just single dosing record. Some of them are more complicated. This individual three has these uh, individual dosing records um, with some different doses at different times. Five here has uh, a bolus and infusion. Um, and we can simulate from this data set Just look at DV iPred. Just to look at this, and so you can see we sent in this uh, more complicated data set um, with different individuals had different regimens. Um, it took some time to code this in, but if you do have the data set like this, you can get these uh, interesting populations with individuals assigned to the dosing that they need. And so this hopefully just shows you a little bit about the complexity that you can build into the data set. Um, to get these um, interesting populations simulated. So that's how we use uh, the, the data set function um, to pass in a simulation data set. That data set um, always has some kind of dosing information in it, um, but it, it also can uh, add uh, covariate information for individuals in the data set. And both the doses will get implemented, and those covariates will get uh, simulated into the data as well. So that's how we use data sets uh, in Energy Solve. Thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you next time.